We've been living in our fixer upper for a little over a year now. As we've settled in and made this house our home, we have found certain things that we love and 100% would do it over again in a heartbeat if we ever did another renovation or a new house build. And then there are also a few things that are just rather quirky or just weren't thought out really well. And so I thought I would make a video sharing some of both of those things. So if you're in the middle of a renovation, maybe you can avoid making the same mistakes that we did. Let's jump right in. Number four, stained doors and stained cabinets. Every cabinet that touches the floor is completely stained. So all of our floor to ceilings. And then we did do white painted cabinets for the uppers just to give a lighter area feeling up towards the ceiling. But I highly recommend this. We had white-ish cabinets in our old house and they were constantly dirty, needing to be scrubbed. But look at this. Especially here, like with the island, the bar stools and everything. I don't know why you would ever paint something where you know little feet are going to touch. Like my kids, they run outside barefoot, they take after me. Hardly ever wear shoes outside. Come inside for an afternoon snack, sit down, and they're always like rubbing their feet on the cabinet fronts. And now, yes, they may need scrubbing every once in a while, but it's not because they look dirty. I stained all the doors and cabinets myself and I used golden oak on the doors and I think it was half simply white, half natural for the cabinets. Although, was that the floors? Maybe that was the floors. I'll double check. And then I topped it off with a water-based poly because over the years that will not yellow. Oil-based polyurethane usually will yellow over the years. It's just kind of inevitable. All right, number three was these hardwood floors. The house originally had the same white oak hardwood floors and you can see right here this little transition piece. Everything from here back in those three back bedrooms is original. Out here there was some termite damage from years past and so we ended up pulling everything up in the living room and then just matching it seamless. If you remember, there used to be a wall here that separated the kitchen was its own space and the dining room was its own space. So when we took out those walls, we just continued the wood floor all the way through and back into the master bedroom as well. I've debated like, did I go a little bit too light on the stain? I think I still do love it. I know I wouldn't want to go too dark because I've seen that before and super dark floors show every little everything. Lighter seems safer. I like the bright feel that it gives and I feel like it's kind of unique because I don't see a lot of really light wood floors in homes. It was a little more costly to go with these hardwoods, but I feel like it's so worth it. It's very durable, it's held up well. And then we just do area rugs. So we have this here and then like back in the kids rooms, we've done We've done little area rugs, but it's easy. I feel like to change out as the styles come and go, you can just change out your rugs. Ben and Henry both have a lot of allergies. And so I think having hardwood floors instead of wall to wall carpet just helps us be able to keep on top of that. Cussing on the dust makes cleaning easier. And speaking of keeping floors clean, I think I have found a new secret weapon in the game of keeping floors consistently clean with four kids. A robot vacuum. And not just any robot vacuum. This is the best robot vacuum I've ever seen. The Norwal not only sweeps, but it also mops the floors for you. Game changer. I think with each generation, there are just things that come along that make life easier. Probably for my grandparents, it was something like the dishwasher or a washing machine. And for our generation, I think it's things like grocery pickup and robot vacuums. They are just things that you need to get done and they just help you be more efficient and take a load off your shoulders. I know I've told Ben over and over, like if I could pay somebody $5 to do my grocery shopping every week, I would totally do that. And that's essentially what we have now with grocery delivery. It's like at my doorstep and I am so here for it. And for me, it's the same with consistently mopping all the floors and vacuuming in those hard to reach areas like under the bed or under furniture. If I could have somebody to come alongside me and help me accomplish those tasks on a weekly basis, I absolutely would. And that's kind of what a robot vacuum is. It's like having a personal assistant. He knows when he's on the rug and he knows when he's not on the rug. He won't turn on some mops until he gets off the rug. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's He can slide under that furniture with ease, take the transitions in the carpet, and mop those areas that rarely would ever get a good mopping. The Norwal is super advanced. It doesn't just wander around bumping off walls. It methodically maps your home 
and then it goes back and forth and creates these straight lines and cleans every square inch. It's super easy for me in the afternoons. I can just put the littles down for naps and put the stools and chairs up. And then me and the big boys will sit down and do some school time while this thing is just cleaning my house for me. You can use the app to create schedules or to tell it to clean a certain room, or you can even use Siri to tell it what to do. So the Norwal is actually the first of its kind in that it has self-cleaning mop pads. So it'll go back to the station every so often, clean its mop pads, come back out and get to work again. It also has this really cool technology called Dirt Sense, where it can sense if a certain area of your floor is extra dirty and it will circle back and give it a second mopping. Check this out. Ew. This will never cease to be so satisfying. Whoa. Out with the old and in with the new. Another really cool feature is that just like a washing machine, you can set this up where it has auto water exchange, where it's adding in new water and emptying out your dirty water. And that just saves you even more time. If you'd like to learn more about the Norwal, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below this video. So you can click that and check it out. Number two, white appliances. We went back and forth on this. Our old fridge eventually went out and we did replace with a white fridge. We had stainless steel before. I love it. No fingerprints, a year in, absolutely would do it over again. White dishwasher, the white oven, and then down here, for the first time in eight years of marriage, Ben and I finally got a microwave. We had this cut out design for the microwave and then for a long time it just sat without a microwave in there. We were storing like big bowls and stuff in there. We finally got our microwave. I have the trim kit, I just need to get it installed, but it's been game changer. Like how did I live so long without a microwave? I try not to overuse it. It's probably not the healthiest thing to just use it all the time, but it is very practical. He's got bags of popcorn. Ben is all about the popcorn, so he made it from bags of popcorn for a movie night. He actually didn't use the microwave. That's not microwave popcorn. That's air pop popcorn. And then you melt the butter on the stove and you pour it over. It's the best. So white appliances, 10 out of 10 recommend. My most favorite feature of this house, hands down, has to be the laundry room. Now I did not get the spick and span. This is just as it is functioning as a laundry room. I'm gonna show you this space. We do not just have loads and loads of extra space to devote to this laundry room. So it's about a 10 by 10, but I think we really maximize the space well. We got washer dryer, built-in ironing board, squeaky door. And then this is about five feet long with drawers. We keep kids clothes in there. We throw clean laundry up here to fold. And back here, we've got shelves for towels. And here is our family closet where we store all of our in-season clothes. So I've got my clothes, Ben's clothes, kids clothes down here. So Spurgeon, Ivy, Henry, Fern. And then over here, we have shoe shelves for each member of the family. This has made laundry a breeze. Just the functionality of having a family closet doing the laundry, folding it here, putting it away. I usually do about a load of laundry a day, if not every other day. And it takes like 10 minutes to put away a load of laundry because everything's just right here. I figure eventually when the kids get older, they'll be taking their clothes and using the closets that are in their room. But for now, this is just super functional. Even for Ben and I, we don't use the closet in our room. We use this closet. And then we store out of season clothes in all of the other closets. So when we have our winter clothes in here, summer clothes are in the other closets. And we just trade out like that. If you have the space to do something like this, you absolutely should. I highly recommend this setup. So those four things are my top favorite, love it, would definitely do it again in a heartbeat. And now for the four things that are just a little weird. Quirk number one would have to be the fact that we have no garage. We sacrificed our whole garage carport area to expand our living space. And so we that's where we got our master bedroom, bath, and laundry room, which I honestly, I wouldn't trade for a garage any day of the week. But sometimes I just wish that we had an extra space for like our little mini deep freeze or maybe an extra fridge or something like that. Our goal with this renovation was that we wanted to work under the existing roof line and we weren't going to add on outside of that. Whenever you start adding on square footage outside of your roof line, the price really adds up fast. And so we did the carport conversion 
and lost the garage. That's the trade-off. We do have this storage shed out back. And so that's where we keep like extra storage stuff that you would usually keep in a garage. I guess I could just put my mini freezer out there. It doesn't have electrical run out there. So we have to run extension cord. And then I'd be like running through rain and snow to grab a roast or ground beef. You know, that's really not a big deal. Maybe I should do that. Cause where I have it right now is my master bedroom. Number two, this is something that I'm kind of a little bit irked about, but it's also not something that I would necessarily change with the existing floor plan that we have. We have no mud room. And so it's not really a big deal, except whenever kids have been swimming in a little kiddie pool in the backyard or on rainy days or snowy days, we don't have any type of a transition here. And so when they come in, I'm always like putting out lots of towels and trying to get moisture up off the wood floor quickly. So that way we don't have any issues with our wood floors and I mean they are very durable but sometimes I'm just like man I wish I had like a little tiled entryway I don't think I would like how that would look just with the layout that we have here I think it would look out of place to have put some tile there if we ever do a little addition maybe it'll be like an eight by eight mud room right here where they can just take off snow gear and wet stuff and whatever and we don't have to worry about like mopping it up instantly or damaging a wood floor. This corner area has been so many different things over time. I have a chair there for a while. Right now we have the little kids playhouse thing. It's always a mess, but um, they'll take books and sit in the playhouse and read and stuff. So that's a fun little corner. Quirk number three would have to be, we kind of got our master bathtub a little too small. I've never really been much of a like soak in the tub every day kind of person until this pregnancy. And now I'm like, I, give me all the soaks. But this thing is so small. If you remember from my other video, I didn't want the fancy tile where you have to like scrub out the grout. I just wanted a simple panel like this where you can just spray that scrub bubbles and wipe it down. And so I like the style just fine, but I do wish we would have gone about six inches wider on the tub because when you sit down and it's like, you're almost bumping both sides. We did do this like rounded shower curtain. So showering's easy, it's like, gives you a little bit of extra elbow room. We were trying to maximize laundry space on the other side of this wall and so we went a little narrower here but I do wish we would have given ourselves at least half a foot more for the tub. Random fact, there actually used to be a door here but with this door and then opening into that door we ended up taking it off, pulling the shelf fronts out and I went ahead and stained the fronts and then we've got matching little bins for this so that worked out better. Number four and finally this is not a huge deal but it kind of feels like a huge deal sometimes. I don't love that our electrical panel and our attic access are in the living room. I had so much good feedback about what I could do to cover the electrical panel. I threw this canvas up there for now. Doesn't fully cover it, but it helps. I liked the idea of a mirror on hinges. That was something people suggested or like hanging a tapestry there. So I may eventually do one of those things, but it's literally right when you walk in the front door, there's your electrical panel. We didn't really think that one through. Also, the attic access is right here in the middle of the room. The reason being is we put our HVAC up and this was the easiest place to access all of that. I suppose maybe we could have tried to push to get that somewhere else, like off the laundry room or something, but just the way that the house was, this ended up being the best place for that. So don't love it being there, but it is what it is. Wanted to mention once more for those who may be interested in checking out the robot vacuum that over Black Friday, they will have their best deals. And so you can search it on Amazon or on Google and find it there. So there you have it. I hope that some of my feedback may be helpful to you in your journey. And I always love hearing from you as well. So if you are in the middle of a renovation or a new build, or if there are just features about your home that you think are designed really well and things that you love, please drop those in the comment section below because I would love to hear about them. Thanks for following along.